Welcome back to the Early Stage Investor, where we cover and dive into some of the earliest stage assets on the planet in terms of their adoption and future growth. Should you buy Denison Mines? Great question. Let's do a deep dive on the asset, present you with all the important information so that you can make an educated decision. We'll just start. This is the chart of Denison Mines. Historically, very positive. We want to see assets that are not in the bubble phase. They're in the grinding crab market phase, right? Because if you can pick up an asset that is trading super low with an ugly chart, then that is how you get the most possible value, the most possible upside. We don't want to buy assets way up here. We want to buy them down here. Is there deep value in Denison? Well, it does have a price to earnings ratio of 36. That means the price of the asset is 36 times its annual earnings. That's on the pricey side, but it's very positive because when you look at certain assets, especially mining assets, they don't have earnings. Denison Mines has earnings. And generally what you want in a high quality asset is you want that earnings number to grow. If, if the earning number grows, then the price to earnings ratio shrinks and it becomes deeper and deeper value. So if you can pick up an asset before before it skyrockets in price, before the market starts to realize that earnings are starting to grow, then you get massive upside. So let's dive into some of the information related to Dennis and Mines and see if there is value. We'll just start. This comes from Dennis and Mines. Key investment highlights. They're an advanced Athabasca Basin uranium miner with a unique asset mix. They have three low-cost uranium development projects operated by Dennis. And we want that low-cost uranium development project. That's how they're able to generate earnings. If the cost to produce the uranium is much lower than the revenue they get for that uranium, then they book Profit, very good, very good for mines. Mining's a tough business, so they're making money and they're getting this uranium at low cost. The Phoenix mine combines low cost mining method with Athabasca Basin high grade. So they're also getting very high quality uranium. Phoenix mine is ranked the number one mining project globally in 2024 by Mining Journal Intelligence. It's a flagship ISR project significantly advanced through permitting process. So it's made a lot of progress. What you don't want to see with a lot of these mining companies is a mine that has barely begun the process of getting started because it's expensive to get started and to create a mine, right? We want to see mature, good mines that can churn out cash flow and are not going to require the company to dump a bunch of stock on the market to finance the build out of the mine. So they're saying it's significantly advanced. Technical de-risking completed with detailed design engineering and long lead procurement in process. First production targeted for 2027 or 2028. Very good, right? That's growth. That's how that earnings number can grow. That's how their price to earnings can shrink. And that's how the price of the asset can inflate till we get to another price to earnings ratio of 36 at much higher prices and much higher earnings, right? So it's very good. We have a lot of production coming online. There's an interest in strategic regional asset with McLean Lake Mill in mind. So excess licensed milling capacity with approval for extended tailings management facility, 2025 mining restart at McLean North Deposit with planned initial production of 800,000 pounds of uranium. So they have an interest in this mine 2025 mining restart again incoming cash flow for this asset we know how scarce uranium is we cover it all the time high potential exploration portfolio and interest in key mines slash projects operated by majors so not only do they have some high quality reserves and significantly advanced mines but they also have high potential exploration port Portfolio, large exploration portfolio, including Moon Lake South and Johnson Lake Properties, minority interest in Orono Denison Midwest, joint venture in Cameco's JCU's Millennium Project. They have a minority interest in a Cameco mine. Cameco is the biggest company in the space, so massive for Denison. This is super important. Strong balance sheet with over $400 million Canadian Canadian dollars of working capital, physical uranium and investments. That's what we want to see. It's super important. Will it grow? Does it have a strong balance sheet? 
to support that growth. Denison's financial and liquid assets on hand relative to flagship development project initial capex 400 million in is unrivaled and puts the company in an enviable position for project advancement. Huge tailwinds. Uranium is the new oil. Denison Mines has a strong balance sheet. Lots of uranium in the ground. They're already making money, right? They already have earnings. Diversified Athabasca Basin asset base with superior development leverage. So these are their mines. 95, they have a 95% interest in the flagship Wheeler River project. This is a development stage project. It's the largest undeveloped uranium project in the infrastructure-rich Eastern Athabasca Basin. The largest undeveloped uranium project. So they have a fortune of uranium in the ground. They have a 22 and a half interest in the strategic McLean Lake uranium mill and mines. 11% of global uranium production is processed through the mill. The mining restart approved using Sabre mining with planned 2025 production of 800,000 pounds, right? This is how they generate cash flow, as mentioned. Then they have a 69.35% interest in the emerging Waterbury Lake project. This deposit highlights potential for future development project pipeline. And of course, 385,000 hectares of exploration ground up in the Athabasca Basin, which is considered the Saudi Arabia of uranium. Lots of quality in this asset. UXC did a comparison of a whole bunch of these uranium mines to see which ones truly are the lowest cost, right? How much does it cost to get it out of the ground? This is just so unbelievably massive for Denison, right? The Phoenix Wheeler mine. In dark green, we see Denison mines, right? The Phoenix Wheeler mine can get uranium out of the ground at $16 an ounce. Right now, uranium's at $80 an ounce. They're cash flowing massively. Again, that is how Denison is able to generate earnings, right? The Waterbury mine, $25 per ounce. And then the Griffin Wheeler mine, $25 per ounce. Absolutely massive if you want a company that generates earnings. Very good to be on this end of the chart. Now, these are the numbers. Robust balance sheet. Again, we talked about this with $400 million in working capital, physical uranium investments. So this comes from their July 2024 update, but they're giving us some numbers that go back to 2023. But as of 2023, they had 2.3 million pounds of uranium, in holdings of physical as of March, 2023, which is a market value of $271 million. They acquired this uranium at an average cost of $30 per pound, right? When the uranium market was dirt cheap. So that is massive for Denison. They have 120 million Canadian dollars in cash and cash equivalents, super liquid. And they have $26 million of investments in uranium equities and convertibles with zero debt. So far, it's looking incredibly solid as far as a way of getting exposure to uranium, right? They're generating earnings. They don't have debt. They have plenty of cash. They have lots of physical uranium. So their balance sheet position relative to initial project capex for flagship development asset Phoenix is unrivaled among uranium development stage peers, meaning they have so much capital relative to the capex required to develop their flagship project that they're in an incredibly positive position. They have enough capital to develop their project. They're not gonna have to dump shares on the market incredibly positive for Denison. So quickly, let's just dive through one of the mines that Denison controls. Like their 95% owned flagship Wheeler River project. It has a 16 and a half year aggregate operating mining life. So just kicking off cash flow for 16 and a half years. There's 106 million pounds of uranium proven and probable reserves, and it's going to get started in 2027 and 2028. So expect massive cash flows and earnings for Denison in 2027 and 2028. We've been covering on the, on the nuclear news that we're in a structural supply deficit. There isn't enough uranium on the market, even when mines like Denison come online. So price the spot price of uranium should be a lot higher and Denison should be cash flowing, right? 
massive for Denison. So that's a look at Denison. I can't find a single thing wrong with it. Uranium is the new oil. Assets like Denison have plenty of exposure to uranium, no debt, clean balance sheet, no need to dilute their shareholders, plenty of liquidity. In my humble opinion, this is not financial advice at all. It's a strong asset. It is a buy. Personally, I would buy it. I would want to find something maybe cheaper than Denison, maybe a lower price to earning ratio. But again, there's going to be plenty of earnings in the future. So that 36 price to earning ratio is pricing in future earnings growth of which there will be plenty of it. So really, it does look fairly valued here. It hasn't pumped yet. Back when uranium wasn't in as bullish of a setup as it is now, Denison hit $12. Right now it is two. So we're going to dive through more assets to see if there are any I like more than Denison, but currently super solid project. Follow along for more. So many more high quality assets out there. Maybe there's much better ones. Maybe this is the best one, right? We're going to go through them all.